Hello! Welcome back to Color in Canvas. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a metallic straight pour on a 16 by 20 canvas. And this is for Dave. I did a really nice pour the other day that we call Aquatica. And my husband said, you're not going to sell that, right? I really like it. And I said, sorry honey, two people have already asked to buy it. So I'm making another one today for Dave. I'm going to use some different colors, a little different size canvas. I've taken the base coat, which I will tell you about, and I've just brushed it along the edges and sides of the canvas. Just my base coat, not an actual tube paint. I just wanted to put a little tint on here of the same color, because sometimes when you use really thin paints, it shows around the outside. And sometimes it looks fine, and sometimes it doesn't. And so I just wanted to do that today. I don't mind if I can see a little edge on the canvas. Some people don't like it. So there you go. I'm going to set that aside and we can talk about our paints. Our base coat is leftover paints as I usually have. Um, I just had some blue and some white. A little bit of green left over. I mixed them all together. It's made a beautiful, beautiful color. I added a bit of gold and these are mixed with Floetrol and water and I actually want that a little bit thinner. I'm going to put in a little bit more water and just give that a stir. And that's going to be our base coat. And I'm using a little different metallics today than I used for Aquatica. And let me tell you about those colors. We're using Artist Loft Copper. Deco Art Metallics in Garnet. Deco Art Metallics in Amethyst. Deco Art Metallics Sapphire. Love this color, Deep Sapphire. And I still had a few drops left of my Folk Art Aquamarine. And a little bit left. I actually had to pour Floetrol and water in the bottle and shake it to get this out because it's really empty. This is my uh, Folk Art Metallics Ice Blue, one of my absolute favorite colors. Uh, Deco Art Extreme Sheen in Silver. Deco Art Extreme Sheen 24 Karat Gold, which good luck finding that these days. It is very hard to find these colors. And then this yellow cup over here, this is a mixed blend. I mixed yellow and gold together. So that's what I have in here. Uh, just a mixed blend. And this is Artist Loft Metallic Lemon Yellow that I've mixed about 50-50 with the 24 karat gold. And then I never put white in. This is uh, Artist Loft Pearl. And these are all mixed roughly two parts Floetrol to one part paint and then water to thin. These will take a lot more pouring medium than some of the other ones will. They're incredibly dense. So I may have put closer to three parts Floetrol in these three. So anyways, we have our paints. They're all mixed very, very thin. You can see that. You can't see that. It's not dripping off very well. But it is mixed quite, quite thin. You see it barely leaves a trace. And that's the consistency that we want for this pour. So the other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put a little bit of our base coat in the bottom and I've mixed a little bit of uh, uh, extra gold into this base coat. I thinned it out with water and I added a little bit of iridescent medium. Uh, I wanted a little bit of something extra, not just kind of the flatter base coat color. I wanted it to shimmer a little bit just in case it shows. So let's get our base coat put down. I'll put these paints aside and we can get started. There's our little 16 by 20 canvas. Pour our base coat down. Just picking up some of this extra and moving it along here to the edges that didn't get much. 
That's why I like to work on a plastic surface. It's that way anything that drips off is usable. It does require a bit more cleanup at the end, but I find that I can serve a lot of paint this way. So keep that in mind. Some people like to use puppy pads. That's a nice easy cleanup. And that's a great idea too. But you'll have to decide which method is best for you. Remember, you're the artist. It's your studio. You have to work with, uh, with what you have and what works best. <gasps> and I just spilled my yellow paint. Did you see that? Gosh darn it. We're going to fix that. I can scoop that up back into the cup and it's fine. See, another reason to work on plastic. <laughs> there you go. If you have an accident, you can scoop your paint back right up. Whereas if it was on paper, it would have been soaked up by now. So there we are. Oh my gosh. I can't believe I did that. I really should have made a larger space to pour this on, but I didn't. So I'm just making a colossal mess. But as long as the painting turns out, I don't care. Sometimes you make a mess when you make art. That's just how it is. We've saved about 95% of our yellow, so that's awesome. Now we have a drop right here, which will become part of the painting. All right, let's get our cup poured and we'll get started and try not to make any more messes before we do that. That's too funny. It's too funny when the universe gives you those little winks and you go, you were talking about saving paint on plastic and then you spilled paint all over it. It's just too funny. We'll grab a cup there. Okay. I'm going to pour into this cup. I'm going to move my canvas over just a bit so you can see the cup better. And I'm going to start in the bottom with that base coat color that we added the iridescent and the gold to. I'm trying to remember kind of the series of events last time. I think I may pour our dark blue in and I'm pouring from up high because I want these paints to blend and I'm not scraping out the cups because I may want a few drops of those afterwards. That's the reason I'm doing it. Normally you would scrape out the cups. But I'm going to leave the little drips in here. Put in our copper. Um, yeah, I'm going to put in our other blue. Our silver. And last painting, when I did Aquatica, I said, oh, I shouldn't have used the silver, and I actually believe the silver added to it. So I'm leaving it in this time. We're adding it again. Our gold yellow. Our amethyst. I'm going to pour in our pearl. Our garnet, and last but not least, our 24 karat gold, which I am going to scrape out because I have more in a squeeze bottle if I need more. All right, there we go. Everything is in the cup. Move this over. Get this back where you guys can see it. And I think I will torch this first. 
a little bit of air, air bubbles in the base coat and those will pop through your other paint. And so I don't want a lot of these light blue air bubbles popping through. So I'm torching them out. And they seem to torch out a lot easier when the paint is thinner. So that's a good thing. Because you'll notice sometimes when you do a technique where you're using thicker paint, like a ring pour or something, and you're torching it and those bubbles are being stubborn, not so much in this case, they seem to go quite well. All right, let's pour this down. Here we go. One, two, three, pour. We're pouring from up high because we want the paints to blend together. And uh, let's see. Pouring up high and thin paint makes for copious amounts of air bubbles. So let's get rid of those as they're coming up. Okay, this is moving beautifully. Let's get it over to this side and see if we have enough paint. paint. I think we're going to be okay. I don't think we're going to be short on paint. How it's going to look remains to be seen. Yeah, we have enough paint. We're good. Just kind of have to decide where we're going with all of it. I think we'll just go right here and we'll pour off this corner and this side first. You can see I'm just kind of flowing quickly because with thin paint that's kind of how it goes so I'm just gonna go corner to corner to corner and just get the whole thing done really quickly and I need this side to go just like that because that light blue thing looks awful so I'm just going to tilt it until that's gone and if we lose something else, then so be it. Touch up these corners while we wait for our cells to start appearing, and they already are. I always like to pick up the drips for the corners. Normally I touch up the corners as I go. I didn't this time. I think we're going to be okay. Dave won't mind. Look at all the garnet cells. Cool. So I'm going to fast forward this part of the video because the, uh, the amount of time that it took to get from finishing the pour to the cells being pretty much done popping up was over 10 minutes. It took a, a quite a long time to develop its uh, final look. And so I busied myself touching up the corners and torching it over and over and over again, just because I wanted all those air bubbles out of there. Um, and I had mixed all those paints up so quickly that I did have a lot of air bubbles in it. So we're taking care of those. But you can just see so many colors, so many cells popping out. It turned out so awesome. And uh, yeah, really, really happy with it. And it was worth waiting for. This could be very, very cool when it's dry, couldn't it? It might be. I wasn't so sure, but it's growing on me. And I think the orientation matters. I think you need to, I think that's the top and this is the bottom. Or maybe it's the other way around. Well, this is one of those paintings that everybody debates which direction it looks better. So I'm fine with that. 
And you know who gets to decide? Dave, because it's his painting. So, yay! I don't have to decide. Less decisions for me. So, uh, at this point, the painting is pretty much finished making all the cells that it's going to make. There might be one or two more that uh, pop up as it's drying, but it's pretty much done. So I'm setting it away to dry, cleaning up the edges, let the paint stop dripping, and going to set it aside. And it took about three days to dry to the touch. Now I have to hang it on the wall for a month and let that paint cure before it can be varnished. So I'm going to show you a picture of this dry at the very end of the video. And you can see that the colors deepen. Some of them are a little bit more muted, but all of those colors will come back when the painting is varnished. So we have to keep that in mind. It's not going to look exactly like this, and it's not going to look exactly like the dried one at the end. It's going to be somewhere in the middle, and it's going to be beautiful. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and share, and please go and paint something beautiful for yourself. Bye-bye.